I so often get asked how to create video mock-ups um, for images. So on my Instagram, I might have a website scrolling through an image or a graphic. And today I thought I'd show you how to easily do that within Photoshop. So to start, I'm just gonna open up an image that I have here. Crop it down just a little. Okay. So basically I'm gonna record a video, a screen video recording, and then pop it into this image. So first things first, let's go ahead and create that video. You can use QuickTime, you can use your, your you know, website or your MacBook recorder. You can also use Screencastify or Loom. And today I'm just gonna use Screencastify simply because I'm double recording. And you just wanna slowly scroll through the website. This is gonna look a little glitchy just because I am <laughs> double recording. Um, and it's probably wondering what's happening. But you can go ahead and scroll through. If you're happy with it, go ahead and hit stop. And then I'm just going to download the one I already have done. It'll be quicker. Save to disk, export as MP4, like so. And so that's going to be exporting um, onto my desktop. So I'm going to go back to Photoshop. And we're going to go ahead and create a smart object. So by doing that, you want to create a rectangle first. I'm just going to tap my screen and set the size of the actual website, your website screen size, size that you just recorded. So for mine, it's 1680 by 1050, I believe. Hit enter. Looks right. I'm going to change this, the color to black. And then before touching that, adjusting it, go ahead and right click on that layer and choose convert to smart object. Like so. So now I'm just gonna kind of downsize or reduce the size of the screen a little bit. Um, as you can see, it's not really fitting, of course, and that's okay. I'm gonna just go ahead and hit enter. And now I'm actually going to choose edit, transform, distort. So by distorting it, you're actually going to drag each corner down, down to the corners of the screen, like so. So you can kind of see how it's how I'm doing that. See how it's distorting it. Try to make it as good as I can get it anyway. Fix that corner. Enter. Okay, so because you already made a smart object, all you have to do is just double click that box and you'll see this is the screen size, which is pretty cool. And it opens up in a new tab. So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and choose window timeline and choose create video timeline. So I'm just tapping right on there, like so. So now I'm gonna head back into that smart object on the right hand side here. And I'm going to go ahead and drag that video that I just downloaded. If it has downloaded, let's see. Save to disk. Okay. So I'm going to drag that video into the smart object. Like so. Let it load. All right. Looks like I didn't get my screen size right, but so I'm just going to shrink it. Don't recommend it. Try to get the right size of the screen. But you're happy with that. Before you do save it, hit, hit create video timeline again. And you'll notice there's two different layers. As you can see, it matches up the layers here. So you want to make sure that these two layers are the same length. Because the background, when I do different mockups, I drop the opacity of the actual video or image to make it look more realistic. So under opacity, I'm actually going to drop it down to... 80%. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to hit command save or file save and close out of that tab. And as you can see, it updates on the actual other side of it, which is really neat. So you'll notice that um, you can also create, you know, drop the opacity here too. If you have a black screen, it works well. If obviously it's not black, it's not, it doesn't look great. So zoom out. I'm actually going to drop it a little bit more. 75, hit save, go back, 
like so. Um, the other thing you can do to make it look more realistic is if you double click on that layer, you can actually create a like gradient overlay. <clears throat> Choose the overlay style like that. You know, maybe if it changes and then change like maybe it's going to be lighten, multiply, you drop the opacity just a little bit. Sometimes it makes it look a little bit more realistic depending on kind of the color of the photo, how you're using it. And the other thing is doing a pattern overlay. So I will typically do this if there's like a grain, which my image does have a grain to it. So as you can see, there's a grain right there. It's under multiply, but you can change that to different, obviously settings, color burn, linear burn. I think typically I just do multiply and then drop the opacity just a little bit. So as you can tell, it has that same green over you. So you're happy with that. All you have to do is hit play. And you'll notice this little blue bar <clears throat> is going to be shifting and the screen will be moving with it. It's basically loading right now. So if you replay, it'll go faster. It's just gonna kind of load the speed of everything, um, but it will go once you export it. So this is just simply an example. As you can see, it'll scroll right through. So when you're happy with it, go ahead and file, export, render to video. You can choose the document size, um, medium quality, high quality. If it's a you know tablet, you can change the sizes, change the file name, hit render. Might take some time. It's worth it because it's a pretty cool option to have. So hopefully that helped.